So I literally just got done watching the Black Widow film, which was approximately two hours and 15 minutes. I wrote down a lot of things during the runtime, so let's get into it right from the beginning. So Black Widow's intro was adequately filmed enough. Wasn't really a spectacular intro to begin the film with. The key figure of the intro that really stuck out to me was Natasha Romanoff's actor, actress that played her as supposedly a young little girl, but the person that played her character in the intro, to me, I don't know if they tried making the actress look like this or if they actually had an actor but to me it looked like a young little boy I thought it was a brother and sister at first for the longest time until they continuously started saying sisters and girls and all of that stuff and then right before the start of the credits they did it again that showed the two sisters and I was like okay so they're both supposed to be girls but honestly Black Widow's young character just kind of looks like a little boy to me with highlighted hair. So otherwise, it was an acceptable intro, wasn't spectacular. That was just really jarring of a part for me in the intro. So after the intro, we get the credits. And this is where the film shined the most. The intro credits had some dark ambiguity to them. It showed the events that led up between the intro and what will presumably be 21 years later. And it showed clips and bits and pieces within the credits of what the sisters went through. Basically, they were thrown into a concentration camp to grow up in and turn into basically hit girls like Black Widow ultimately becomes. And all of this is presented underneath the overlay of a music cover of Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. And normally, I would think that these kind of versions, these kind of choices for music would, would feel just inconsistent and just uneven with the film. But honestly, the cover, how the cover is presented, the, the, how the cover sounds and everything, actually fit in perfectly with the dark, ambiguous credits. The best part about this film are the intro credits, hands down. And with that being said, with how great and masterful the intro credits were, honestly kind of deprived the film of any other soul and heart because you can tell they, they put their whole passions and heart and soul into the intro credits. Why? Why just the intro credits? I don't know. Damn good intro credits. The rest of the film? Nah. So yeah. So after that, I started to continue watching Black Widow. And the other biggest thing that stuck out to me throughout the entire film... Florence Pugh, or however you say her last name, who played Yelena, and David Harbour, everybody knows who he is, who played Red Guardian as the dad, they steal the show. They steal this entire film, their dialogue, the writing that they're given to perform the dialogue, their acting, just pitch perfect. They're hilarious, they're empathetic, they're everything. And I honestly wish that they would make a film based just on those two as just duo in a film. They had so many jokes, so many one-liners. Like, the majority of the film, they were all just making fun of Black Widow's posing and just Black Widow's posture and everything in between. And also, within the writing, they even had jokes which were kind of treading in R-rated territory with describing some, some surgical procedures that ultimately became funny scenes because of how funny the lines and writing were. 
And to accentuate on what I just said, a great supporting cast, excellent character banter, the Black Widow jokes, the Red Guardian with his little adversarial feud towards Captain America, his jokes against Captain America. To me, the, the humor... The humor mostly landed in in most jokes. It, I'd say 95% of the time, this if this weren't an action drama, I would say this is a comedy because this is a really funny film. And for the most part, the acting all around is fine with a lot of standouts. And with it being a Black Widow film, unfortunately, Scarlett Johansson wasn't exactly the main star in the acting department. Like I said, it had to... I have to definitely give credit to Florence Pugh and David Harbour. But the, everybody in the film, they, they do a good job acting. Some stood out more, but acceptable throughout all cast. Unfortunately, that's where my praise ends for Black Widow. And honestly, that's that's a lot more praise than I thought I was going to give this film credit for. After all the lead up of Scarlett Johansson's very controversial interviews and everything, of her coming out and trying to say that this is, this is, I don't know how exactly she worded it, but this was supposed to be the Me Too of film, whatever that means. I understand to an extent what she was getting at in that most of the heroes and most of the cast are female. And that's, that's where films usually lose me is when you can tell that they're trying to just give gender specified roles, especially in a very specific role for a, one of the main villains that a lot of people actually were very upset towards it was Taskmaster. I don't really read comics. I'm not familiar with the Marvel comics or anything, really just the MCU films. But I can understand the aggression towards the change in, in Taskmaster and everything. Personally, from just a film viewer of the MCU, uh, Taskmaster, they at least gave depth, backstory, it made sense. Objectively speaking, I mean that they did give Taskmaster's film character depth and backstory and I appreciate that. I do firmly believe that when you adapt source material, you should stick to the source material. With that being said, they semi did justice to Taskmaster but also didn't. I appreciate that Taskmaster had depth and backstory and act and was an actual character, but I'm also disappointed that they didn't stick to the source material. And again, another female. Supposed to be male, I guess. <sighs> and on to the male gender. Just like with Wonder Woman 1984, I really don't understand why writers feel the need to make men look like such misogynistic trash. Don't get me wrong, men and women, both genders, all genders, some people can be trash people. That doesn't mean that every person in that specified role, gender, sex, whatever, that doesn't mean that they're all trash, okay? As a male, I try my best to not be such trash. There are men out there that are trash, same as women. There are women out there that are trash. And Dracov's character, the main main villain, he didn't really have much character other than he was a misogynistic trash bag. That's about it. Basically, he had an army that kidnapped little girls and gave them a good future into being hit women and that's fine and all but the problem is that he would brainwash them he would manipulate them just more tactics showing that men are trash 
plot devices showing that men are trash. And I, I, believe, I believe where they went wrong in this category of the filming and the writing department, I feel like they were trying to go along with how the Winter Soldier was filmed and written and everything. I, I could feel a vibe of the Winter Soldier. It wasn't, it wasn't so political like the Winter Soldier is, but I don't know, there was just a vibe that kind of was similar to me, at least. But Dreykov's main villain character, overall, fine acting, terrible character, just kind of pushed his villain just to the side, just like any other MCU villain. And as I said about the intro and the rest of the film, the rest of the film suffers because the intro credits just, I feel like the intro credits just had a lot more heart and soul poured into the making of the intro credits. And it's really baffling. Great intro credits. Why couldn't they put even half of that passion into the rest of the film? Instead, what we got was a standard fare, well-made hot trash of an MCU film. Where it's made fine, it's tonally consistent, it doesn't feel uneven, really anywhere, it's fleshed out. The dialogue for once actually works because it's, it's very funny. Most of the time, I'll just say the humor sticks out the most. The, the story itself is, eh, it's okay. It's not bad, but it's okay. You know, in a Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff standalone film, I just, I wasn't much of a fan of Scarlett Johansson's character. And it's not even having to do with the stuff she was doing to promote this film. It's just, the film itself just kind of did an injustice to the Black Widow character. I really appreciated the humor against Black Widow's character, you know, people, characters making fun of her character, but in a Black Widow film, I don't know, she, to me, Black Widow didn't really feel essential, whereas her family actually felt essential to the main story. They all had their own roles in the story that they had to, had to kind of combat and go along with. Black Widow's character was just kind of along for the ride in a standalone Black Widow film. That's how I feel. That's how it seemed to be presented to me. You could have a different opinion, that's fine. As far as the visual effects, some good looking scenes, some bad looking scenes. It was, this is the one and only part of the film I will say was very inconsistent, uneven. Uh, say for example the tank scenes when it's driving practical effects mostly everything around it CGI so the objects themselves looked real everything else that I guess they couldn't find a prop for fake as hell which seemed to be a lot of things in the set that's really about all that I have to say about Black Widow. I actually said the last two negatives as the first two negatives, and that's all I wrote down for Black Widow. Overall, Black Widow is a visually and film wise, it's a well made film beneath the colorful humor, the, the great sense of humor, the great acting. Beneath all of that, it's a, a standard fair Marvel trash film. And you know, I used to, I used to have such pride in watching MCU films up until I would say started about the, the time the first Avengers released. After that, they started making more and more standalone films, and 
the more and more I just realized they were all just being made the same. And that's still the case here with Black Widow. The only exception is it's made mostly well with the inclusion of all these toxic things and agendas like men are trash, men are only good for one note jokes at their own expense. And I'm not okay with that. And this isn't just me being a man. This is objectively speaking and have some common sense, okay? Just because one guy is a trash bag doesn't mean that every guy out there is. A lot can be, but not all of them are. And especially in the most recent MCU films, I'm noticing and noticing. And even DCU and other films that release nowadays, they just, they have this agenda behind them where it's female all, which is fine. I'm okay with that. I, I actually, I would prefer having a female hero and have them be the main focus, but not at the expense of the other gendered characters just taking a hit just because of that as a reason. So because of that, that really dropped it from a standard fair MCU film to below that of a standard fair MCU, MCU film. I was trying to be very forgiving, but it just, it caught up to me. I, I, I can't stand all men in a film just being crap. This isn't nearly as bad as Wonder Woman 1984 and how they treated men, whereas literally every guy that was on screen just guffawed at Gal Gadot and her butt. At least they didn't really do that in Black Widow. No, they just, in other ways, made guys just look like pieces of crap that were only good for one-liners and manipulating women. Literally. Literally. So overall, again, Black Widow for me is a 4 out of 10. Thank you.